Good gravy, we're back. It's a new flashpoint operation, Flattened Earth. Looks like we're working for House Lee Only fair, considering that we denied them their, you know, oh so precious combine defector. But uh, yeah, we're going to say we're going to be working for Lady Marina. Our opposing force are, I guess, the Razorbacks. Don't know who those are. They could just be some, oh, oh we can actually see it. The Razorback Company, led by Commander Sigan El El Eliothi. The Razorback Company is a small, scrappy mercenary company from the frontier world of Joppa. While Eliothi is a competent lance leader, her hostility towards authority figures and predisposition to side with the underdog have routinely led the Razorback Company to bite off more than it can chew. Interesting. It is a mid-length engagement, so I'm guessing three to maybe four missions. Consecutive deployments, yes, so we will be pushed. Fortunately, we've got plenty of mechs and mech warriors to do it. And they're going to give us some rare items. That's perfectly fine with me. Some high-grade weapons, maybe some accessories, extra systems. That's what I really want, are some extra systems and whatnot. Let's see what Lady Marina has to say. A uh, seditionist group has taken root in Capellan System of Cavalor. House Leal will handsomely reward any company that will root out and destroy these traitors to the Confederation. Yeah, the uh, House Leal is they're, they're really they really crack down on sedition because they have they have issues with it. Given because uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Operation Flattened Earth High Orbit over Cavalor. Welcome to Cavalor, Commander Fox. I appreciate your timeliness in responding to my summons. The task I have for you is a sensitive matter that requires a swift response. Let's see what Cavalor is. Cavalor was settled after the reunification war as the Capellans sought to reinforce their borders with the Magistry and the Free Worlds League. Since that time, fertile soil and plentiful resources have caused the population of the world to explode. So a valuable world. The Magistry, uh, if you watched my campaign playthrough, which is the, this is season two, season one was uh, the campaign playthrough of this game. The Magistry of Canopus was the primary ally for Lady Kamea and also their big, their mysterious financial backers. And the Free Worlds League, that's uh, House Merrick, you know, we were the guy who did the white lies with uh, Davinder Singh. So let's continue on. That's what we're here for, Lady Marina. Tell us what we're dealing with. Avalor is a home to a group of sedition, seditionists, the Volkovites. Their name was taken from their leader, a charismatic woman of low birth named Persephone Volkov, who uses her platform to spit on and threaten the most deeply held tradition of the Capellan state. Those were the Chancellor's own words, mind you. Volkov's actions have the yeah, Volkov's actions have left him most displeased. Okay, so the Chancellor Born 2964, the current Chancellor of the Capellan Confederation, nicknamed the Diablo, Maximilian, which his full name is Maximilian Liao, Maximilian seized the throne from his father, Tormax Liao, in 2990. The coup was carried out with the support of the Warrior Houses and the Red Lancers and culminated in 2992 with the fatal poisoning of the Elder Liao. Under Maximilian's rule, the Warrior Houses have doubled in number, and House Liao's Maskarovka intelligence service have grown substantially in influence and strength. The Maskarovka is their, basically their spy agency and kind of like their secret police. They are probably one of the two most feared of the secret agencies, the Maskarovka of House Liao and Dest the Draconis Elite Strike Teams of uh, the Draconis Combine. Well, obviously, the Draconis Combine. Yikes. If this Volkov lady has caught the Chancellor's attention, she's in for a world of hurt. He knows this because he actually is a, uh, a, a Liao citizen, although he probably renounced his citizenship to when he went mercenary. That's putting it mildly. In single speech, Persephone Volkov denounced all three cornerstones of Capellan culture, the Corvin Doctrine, the Sarna Mandate, and the Lorix Order. Questioning any one of these texts is dangerous, but what Volkov did? Well, there are behaviors that cannot be tolerated and lines that cannot be crossed. Ooh, lots of lore here. The Corvin Doctrine, a founding Capellan philosophical doctrine assembled posthumously from the private correspondence of Alana Corvin Duvall and introduced into mainstream Capellan society by Chancellor Norman Aris. 
Fearing the effects of factionalism and an and expanding human race, Corvin argued that all people must band together in the service of greater humanity. The Capellan Confederation has interpreted these writings to mean that all citizens must bow to the will of the state, specifically personified by the current Liao Chancellor. So the House Liao is inspired by Chinese, basically Han Chinese culture and Soviet Russian culture. Like that's like, you'll, you'll see a lot of Chinese names and Russian names and whatnot. And so they're very heavily inspired by the USSR and communist China, which is why they have these very rigid cultural lines. Like another thing is, like, I, don't, I don't know if they allow religion in the uh, Capellan Confederation. Like they have very, very strict social codes. In 2550, oh, this is the Sarna Mandate. In 2550, mandate that was appropriated, or no, a 2550 mandate that was appropriated by the Capellan Confederation as a key philosophical doctrine. The text of the Sarna Mandate supports the foundation of a rigid caste system with firmly drawn lines between the working class and the ruling elite. The mandate also establishes that for the ruling class, service to the state is both necessary and compulsory. Any action, however draconian, is inherently justified so long as it promotes the survival of the state. Very Sunzian kind of thinking there. Like, if you read The Art of War, like, I believe the first thing that Sun Tzu says is that the art of war is vital to the state and basically, like, all things to preserve the existence of the state are justified. The Lorix Order. A military philosophical society devoted to promoting the belief that the mech warrior is the natural apex of society and that all other social classes should serve the mech warrior class. In return, the mech warriors are expected to perform extraordinary feats of valor in the defense of the lower classes. The very, a, a very uh, kind of lord and knight kind of doctrine. And it's also why uh, the Liao mech warriors are extremely fanatical. It sounds like you're asking us to kill a woman over her political beliefs. That isn't mercenary work, Lady Marina. It's murder. I'm afraid the Chancellor disagrees with your assessment, Dr. Murad. And, the Confeder and in the Confederation, there's no higher crime than threatening the security of the state. And the Chancellor draws little distinction between physical threats and ideological ones. The entire Volkovite community has been marked for death. And I need your you to help me carry it out. So we could say either, I don't think so, Lady Marina, my company doesn't do this sort of wet work. Or we could say, accept Lady Marina's offer. Don't worry about us, we'll get the job done. Well, you know, in most games, you get to be the good guy. I like to be the bad guy. You know, if you're going to pay me money, money, money in order to blip, 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 blap, blap some people who are getting smart on the mouth, then we're doing it. We're going in. I knew that I could count on you. Unfortunately, the Volkovites have hired protection, the Razorback Company, a mercenary command from the Rimward Frontier. You'll have to deal with them before you can move on to your ultimate targets. I suggest that you handle this situation swiftly and cleanly. Cavalor is an important world in the grip of a population boom, and its security is a high priority to, for the Confederation. The Chancellor himself will be monitoring your progress. Then we'd better put on a good show. Let's get to work. So now that we had our little introduction, speaking of battle mechs, having a big variety of them, here is the Battlemaster. This is the BLR-1S. Normally, the, it's not the standard Battlemaster. This, the, the 1S version is a missile-focused version of the Battlemaster, where the typical Battlemaster is pretty balanced. Got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, with an emphasis on lasers, but it's now our, without a doubt, our deadliest mech. It is a jack-of-all-trades assault mech, meaning that it does a little bit of everything, and so it does require you to know a little bit about modding mechs in order to properly design him, because he can't have it all. He's... One thing that's interesting about the Battlemaster, he's surprisingly quick. Uh, I By the standards of an assault mech, he's a lightning bolt, though in the grand scheme of things, he's just not slow. That's the way I would describe him. And otherwise, he is huge armor, potential for huge firepower, surprisingly quick, uncomfortably quick. I think he also just looks absolutely awesome with the, like, I like the way the cockpit looks. I like these kind of, like, ridged shoulder pads. Just an absolutely, like, the mech lives up to its name. Let's see what we put on him. As I said, this mech is a missile-focused mech. You can tell these are all missiles because of their kind of 
lav light lavender color. The stock version, meaning the version that the factory design comes with some lasers and some missile, a little bit of everything. I decided to just get rid of the lasers and just go all in with the missiles. We have four SRM-6s and an LRM-15, allowing it to strike at a variety of ranges. It does mean there's a sweet spot because too close and the LRM-15 struggle to hit too far and the SRMs are out of range. So there is a little bit of a sweet spot, but when we're in that sweet spot, our firepower is now second to none in the lands. Let's, let me give you an idea. Let's back up to the rest of them. We can see right here, firepower rating is 11. So it, there's 10 bars here. So this is beyond the normal levels. 336 damage if it fires all of its weapons and they hit. And to show that the Orion, which was already doing remarkable damage, has a rating of 7 at 233 damage. The Marauder also a rank of 7 with 200 damage. So just an insane, insane jump in firepower. This will be the mech that I pilot into battle just to batter the enemy, just to batter the enemies while you guys probably, this mech, pro I don't know how many kills this mech will get because it's going to lead the shots, but it will knock enemies down. And its main weakness is that it will overheat. Uh, after about three shots, so after that I will either begin slugging it out with them, or I will have to take cover and let my mech cool down. Anyways, let's get started. Alright, so the first mission for Operation Flatten Earth is an assassination in a tundra. Three and a half skulls. Uh, based on the description, I actually chose to get two out of nine salvage here. I wish I could go for three, but two, two was basically, two picks was the best they were giving me. Before you can get rid of the Volkovites, you're going to need to deal with the Razorback Company. The hired guns they imported from the frontier. Our surveillance drones have identified the company's command and control mech, a CP-10Z Cyclops. That's why I want the two. I want to try to get two pieces of the Cyclops, if possible. Eliminate it to cripple the Razorback Company. Clear a path to your real target. Let's do this quickly, Fox. I don't want us to spend any more time on these Jokers than we have to. So. Here is the team. I am deploying a knockdown team in order to try to salvage the two pieces of the Cyclops. Because I know I can't take three pieces, I am willing to basically just try to destroy both of its legs. Killing both of the legs will give us two pieces of salvage, and I, I don't want to jeopardize my equipment too much. So to that end, I'm going to go in the Battlemaster. Battlemaster, very good at knocking enemies down, either through missiles or through punching people. Plus, it's a Tundra, which is going to help against its main weakness. An interesting choice. Hopefully, it doesn't backfire. I'm bringing Scylla in the Marauder. Remember, the Marauder's Lance Command mod lets it take more accurate precision shots, and Scylla is a expert tactician, meaning her precision shots are all really, really accurate. So what I'm hoping is to be able to just needle some of it. And now that now that Scylla's actually piloting a surprisingly deadly battle mech, the attacks should be quite powerful. Valkyrie is going to be going with me into the front to try to like draw some fire off the Marauder and the Archer. Hopefully my slow mech will provide good shots. Like, ooh, high accuracy, low damage, while they might go for Valkyrie, full damage, but hard to hit. That's kind of like what I'm going for, maybe provide a little confusion. And then Kelgas back in the seat of the Archer with a bunch of LRMs. Anyways, see you on the battlefield. All right, welcome to Planet Side, Unpaid Losers. Marina Liana says, for, the, for this first drop, I want you to hunt down the Razorback Company's command and control mech, a CP-10Z Cyclops. It appears to be running a stock configuration, and it will be combat capable at any range, which is very common for assault mechs. They're not very quick, so they don't want to have the vulnerability of being too far away and just getting chiseled down by long-range mechs. And they also don't want to get overwhelmed at close range, so they tend to carry a little bit of everything. I wouldn't, it wouldn't do to underestimate the Razorback Company. Remember, these are frontier mercenaries operating in Liao space. They wouldn't be here if they weren't confident in their abilities. Sigan Sawtooth Eliothy, that would be the um, enemy commander, confident enough to do what's right. We won't let you persecute these people for rejecting your BS screed. That was an unwise display of disrespect. Commander Eliothy, I'd encourage you to change your tone before the Chancellor orders your death as well. Petty tyrants like Maximilian and Leanne are a dime a dozen out in the frontier. You people don't frighten me, and neither do your hired guns. Eliothy out. As brave as she is foolish. Engage the enemy and destroy them, Commander Fox. Liao out. 
Okay, so in an assassination yeah, mission, we will be facing picture. two lances and the command mech. Typically, two lances. What there? So there's one lance here for sure. The command mech is here. It's very possible that an ambushing lance is there. So what I like to do is go after their reinforcements. So, you know, sometimes you just want to go straight for the throat and take out the command mech and make a run for it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grind it out with them. So we'll just head over in this Ready way, out. and I'll tell you once we collide with the enemy. All right, we've got contact with the enemy, and the battle has begun. They are taking, you know, their probing shots at me. This mech is in unusually bad condition. Look at this. It's uh, shoddy with 50%. Yep. That is not great for them. Let's go ahead and reserve down so that... Our, so now that we're using an assault mech, an assault mech has a... What do you call it? Initiative of one. So it is. it moves last. So that means we will reserve all the way down to initiative one. And, and plus, we're in an okay-ish position right now. So it's my turn to move forward, and I am going to... Okay, so once again, as you can see, this this is the cone of my gunfire. There are three ranges. Our goal is to try to find the range that will allow our SRMs and our LRM to not interfere with one another. Yeah. But before that happens, let's go ahead and begin... This guy is in a really, he's surprisingly evasive. We're having some trouble. What I might do is scan him to shred his uh, evasion. So Kelgast here can scan him. That'll shred 10% of his evasion. Now I should be able to actually get a decent lock on this. So look at that, now we're all in the 80s and that's pretty good. And bad news for this mech, unfortunately, as you are about to He's about to get a face full of it. Not the best accuracy, 95% would be the best, but still very good on a mech that has not a lot of armor. So let her rip! Oh yeah. Let's get a damage report. Multiple armor breaches, and it lost basically half of its armor in a single volley. So we're just gonna... Receiving you. You need to get in closer. Firing jump jet. And I don't want to overheat, so I'm going to just shoot as few lasers as will not generate too much heat. So just three shots. Copy that. No dice on it, but it was worth a shot. Negative damage. Yeah. And now Scylla gets to make a move. Can I get a little closer? Yes, we can get in range. So now look at the difference. 60%. And then now that we're in range, 80%. So, and this is also just the tip of the range there. I believe Scylla has a kill shot here, though. Look at that, 91% chance to hit the center torso. I, I'm pretty sure he's those. All weapons fire. Sudden death on a mech right there. Without the precision shot, that was not a guaranteed kill. Like, the shots could have just washed all over the mech. You know, left arm, right arm. Who knows where those shots would have gone. But that's what Scylla is here to do. Scylla is here, like, if you have a weakness, then pray you're out of range of Scylla. Yep. It, it is, it's going to quickly go poorly for you. Letting them take their moves. Battlemaster, 1240 armor. Going to take more than that. Yeah. Okay, like, let's go ahead and reserve all the way down. And I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to get up closer and actually wait. I have we're having the same problem here. So Kelgast is going to probably shred its evasion all, or we could just take a shot. Either either one is acceptable. Heading out. Yeah, I'll just have him take a shot. It's not going to shred two evasion, but shot. There we go. Still like basically, oh, I think Okay, so he unsteadied him, and so I, be I believe the rule is what if a- so this little pip right here, if we look right here, you see that little, like, pip? You can't see it because my mouse goes off, but if your stability hits that little pip, then you become unsteadied. An unsteadied mech can't sprint and is in jeopardy of falling down, and I think once a mech goes unsteady, they lose all of their agility, so that act or all of their evasion, so I'm actually going to be able to just look at- oh my god, 95s across the board. 
Get a load of this. Wait, I'm gonna play the clip. Get a load of this. Oh my god. Down he goes. I, I just can't imagine how it feels for the pilot. Just like this hail of missiles coming at you. The mech is nothing but armor breaches just across the board. It's like, oh man. Let me see. Yep. I, I almost feel like it's a waste Order? to even shoot at this guy. I won't do it. I'm going to sprint into... Uh, I'm all, I'll jump. And I'll do the same thing. Like, what's his to center torso at? 40? Okay, if we can score two hits, he's done. Target confirmed. What do we get? Oh, nice, nice. Because uh, medium lasers, 25 Absolutely. damage apiece. He had 50 structure yeah. in the center torso, so that's the end of him. And now we could just take a natural shot at this guy. I want to fire at the maximum range, though. I just don't want to jeopardize. Eh, this looks like as good as it's going to get. Confirmed. Okay. Eat this. Got an armor breach. Like I said, these backs are really not in. They're not ready for combat. I'm wondering, like, are they having some monetary problems? You know, like, what is, why aren't their mechs fully repaired? Were they in battle yep. with Liao forces earlier? Not sure what the deal is. But it's not going to matter because I'm just going to reserve down so I can go. Waiting for the right And move. I am going to let this guy have it. Have some missiles! Oh, God. Oh, he didn't fall. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, let's see. What's your center? 19? Let's just finish him off. Take him out. Here we go. As I said, Battlemaster probably not going to get a lot of hits just because he's kind of like the setup mech. He's there to just kind of like batter the mech and get him into a weakened position. Yeah, Commander. Very surprising that they don't, like, so look how far this mech, despite being 85 tons, there's only 15 tons more, look how far it can run. Now, I do have a lot of piloting experience, which helps, but, like, you can see what I mean, that this mech, it needs to close it the, the distance to do its damage, but moving that far, it's not going to take long to close the distance, and it's got the armor to wade through some gunfire. Anyways, I'll let you know when we find the, the, uh, the Cyclops. All right, boys, we just got the sensor contact yep. on the Cyclops. Cyclops, 90-ton assault mech, and what, so basically one of the heaviest mechs in all of the game. Notice that despite being an assault mech, it is Initiative 2 right here, and that's because its command computer raises the initiative of all mechs by one, which is why I want it. That's, like, a really good effect. All right, so because we're so fresh, like we're actually in really good shape, it's honestly like th yep. this is as good. This is this is really as much as you could ask for in terms of getting our our chance to get two pieces the of the Cyclops Z. And this is specific. This this good is the go. specific version of the Cyclops that we want. So right now, I'm just gonna try to fight for positioning at the moment. I just want I just need to get my guys in range. Yeah. We're not gonna shoot. We don't want to cause... Do basically, I don't want to shoot until I am ready to start knocking this mech down. I don't want to get beat up too bad, so I'm going to go ahead and use... Because like it, 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 we do have to respect its firepower, so I am going to tank up and run into the open. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Shake this mech up. Okay, good. Valkyrie, always very good for... Shaking some gunfire off. What's up, boss? And let's see what we can do. Unfortunately, we still do not have an opportunity to... So we're probably going to skip another turn. I want to get into... We're, we're still fighting for more position, basically. Right here, and now I'll have you done. tank up. So you actually can have the 40% defense bonus. I'm going to do the same thing. Tank up. How's it going? Kelgas, same thing. I want you to actually jam its sensors so that you can harm its accuracy next lot. turn. Just to give us a little bit of cover. Let's let it take its turn. Good. So he loses, basically lost his whole turn there. All right, so let's see, let, let's reserve so we can all make our moves. Valkyrie. 
Looks like this will be a head-on punch. I really don't like the idea of making a head-on punch because I don't want her to punch the side, the, the center torso of the mech. But at the same time, let's get started. The, the mech has a full, fresh 800 armor. Primary target damage. Okay, don't know what we exposed there. Hopefully it's not the center torso. Let's see. Okay, we got the arm. That is perfectly fine. I need to turn her machine guns off as well. Okay, that basically means yeah. we can just tap this guy. We don't we don't really need to do a lot of damage. So let's just go like this. And I'm just going to tap him with some missiles. My weakest missiles. What are my lowest damage? These ones here. These are my lowest damage missiles. Just tap him with some SRMs. That should give him the knockdown. There we go. Okay, so he's suffered one pilot damage. However, I noticed that he was getting bonus defense in the woods. So I have a feeling he is a yep. guts pilot. And what that means is he is going to have a lot of hit points, Let's at move. least four. So it'll take four knockdowns to bring him to four yep. knockdowns, plus any other, you know, forms of hit point damage we can do. Let's further jam his sensors. Sensors locked on. So that means he will probably use a melee attack. Let's go ahead and let him get up. Because he can't take... We can't do a whole lot to him. Okay, so the ways we can injure him, we can do a knockdown, we can destroy the left and right torso, we can cause an ammo explosion, we can hit the cockpit. There, We have options. It's not... Okay, this yeah. is perfect. We're going to have attack on this side now, so we're doing a balanced amount of damage to him. Why don't you just go give him a punch? Good old... Oh, so he's actually entrenched right now, which is kind of annoying. When he's entrenched like this, he actually resists knockdown, so you're going to see he doesn't get knocked down nearly as much here. Lockdown for physical attack. Let's see what we got. We see we only did like two bars, but now what it means is... Let's check it a damage report. Side... She hit on the side torso there. I'm probably just going to punch him as well, just because the, the Battlemaster packs a pretty nasty punch. Engaging. Okay. Still not yep. enough to knock him over. Like I said, the entrenchment is making a difference. Let's go ahead and let him have a volley of missiles. Not quite enough. Reporting critical hit. What do you Get a damage report on him. Okay, so far we're not digging into the center torso, which is fine. Um... Here's what I'm going to do. Now, this is where Macronox comes into play. I want to zap, I think... I would love to get a, a knockdown and one. So I'm going to do this. Both Snubnose PPCs on the right torso... And let's and without the medium lasers, so that we don't do excessive damage. This should give us two injuries. I'm taking this shot. Left torso destroyed. Oh yeah. That's an injury. Fall down. Get another injury. Okay. Now he's up to three injuries. He could he could have even more than four health though. That's another problem. Okay. So the now what we could do is destroy his left leg next turn. That's exactly what I believe I will do. Yep. Let's go ahead and reserve and let him get back up. Waiting for my opening. What you gonna do? Takes a move. Ooh, God, he has a. I forgot he has an AC twenty. Internal structure damage. Oh, that that dug deep. Okay, fortunately, our rear armor is still good enough to withstand some of that. Uh, let's have Macronox. Yeah. I want. Can you get a shot on its leg here? I think you can. Roger. AC-20, that's like one of my favorite weapons, so... Very deadly weapon. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna shoot one snub-nosed PPC on its leg. Was that enough? Not quite. How'd that taste? The leg is down to 11. Okay, I'll do it next. Take a shot on its le on its leg. 
Just one, one volley of missiles. That's all it should need. Okay. Leg is down. Here's another injury. Oh my god! The pilot is just like, good god, it's like Ugly Gang's, like, nemesis. Where is the ammunition in this mech held? In the center torso and on the right torso. Okay, so I guess we're going to try to destroy the mech's yeah. right torso. I am going to jump over here. Got to make sure he doesn't get behind me. I copy. Kelgast! Um, just center lock it. I, I'm pretty sure the next injury will be enough. What do you need? We gotta let him get up again. Okay. What are you gonna do? Oh! Even with all the accuracy penalties, still took a shot. Fortunately, our armor is holding. Aye, aye. Valkyrie, do you have a hit on this? I need. We need to hit this guy's. Standing by. I think we got a hit over here. On my way. Yeah, we do. Okay, Kelgast, I need you to hit its right tor its uh, torso specifically. No, don't use the lasers. Only missiles. Okay, we might just go for a knockdown instead. I'll just move right over here and maybe fire two volleys of missiles at it. I think. Two missiles ought to do it? Two, two. I think two will do it. Paul? Enemy yeah, there we go. Come on, you've got to, you got to fall unconscious. Oh, we got it. There we go. Commander, the area has been cleared. Darius has given me the green light to land immediately. I I really, really like assassination missions. It's not always this good. Sometimes the, the assassination target is not piloting a particularly valuable mech, but sometimes assassination missions, the, the supporting lances are weak, and then the assassination target is in a really good mech. So it can be really good if you could trash those supporting lances without taking much damage. You could go for the salvage on the lead mech, and that's going to work out really well for us. Anyways, Marina Liao says, nice, nicely done, Commander. With Razorback Company's Cyclops down, their combat cohesiveness will crumble into disarray. If they are wise, they will abandon their clients and crawl back to the frontier to lick their wounds. For now, return to orbit, orbit and conduct your repairs. We'll move on to the Volkovites as soon as you're ready. Liao, out. Hopefully that mission means that it's not an immediate... Hopefully our successive mission isn't immediate so that we can patch up uh, the Grasshopper. Here is the kill board. We didn't really fight that many enemies, so this kind of distribution is about what one would expect. Not surprising that Scylla got the most kills just because... As I said, Scylla is the sniper, is one of our snipers, at least, of the group, and therefore is capable of killing mechs that would have otherwise maybe had an extra turn or two of gunfire before they went down by just needling those weak points, especially the center torso. Kelgas did not, did, despite not getting any kills, he actually had some important roles to play with being able to push mechs down and sabotage their aim. So it, everything went the way I would have hoped it would go. All right, here's our chance to get some salvage. All three are very, we could get lucky. Because remember, we get to pick two and we get nine random pieces. We could get lucky and get the the Cyclops as one of our random nine picks. Let's see what else we could wind up with, though. This wouldn't be too bad. And really, really very highly, a very maximum quality Mydron brand AC5. And, ooh, oh, it's so sad. I love TTSs. Oh, no, I hope I get that as random salvage. Oh, God, I'm going to click the button. What do we get? What do we get? We got the, we got all three people, what, and we got the AC-5. <laughs> what, we got, what, what? Operation Flattened Earth 2, high orbit over Calvor. 
EXO, we're being held by Commander Eliothy of the Razorback Company. It looks like she wants to parlay. Shall I put her on screen? And we could say, go ahead. If she wants to talk, we can talk. Not interested. I got rules against playing with my food. L let's hear what she has to say. So, you're Commander Fox. Under any other circumstance, I'd be honored to speak with you. You're developing quite the reputation on the frontier. Is this a social call, Commander Eliothy, or is there something you actually wanted to discuss? A little of both, actually. Look, Commander Fox, you're on the wrong side of this scenario, full stop. Our clients aren't hurting anybody. They don't deserve what you're about to rain down on them. I feel for them, Commander Eliothy, but the Capellid State but the Capellid State takes a dim view on sedition, and your clients cross the line. Maybe so, but they don't deserve to die for it. Look, Commander, the Volkovites aren't even dissidents. They're a local religion, sort of a folk revivalist movement. The public slander your client told you about it was a sermon delivered in a Volkovite church to a Volkovite audience. It isn't like they were shouting through megaphones in the public square. They were talking loud enough to catch the Chancellor's attention. That's a bad idea in the Confederation. Hell, it'd be a bad idea anywhere, Eliothy. I feel for your clients, but they should have known better. Maybe so, but the fact is House Leah uh, wants my clients dead, and it's paying you to pull the trigger. If you follow through, you'll be wiping them out over a few passages in a couple of books. Are you okay with that, Fox? Because I wouldn't be. Now, here's what I can say. I don't write the contracts, Commander. You don't know that. I can say, you're the Op 4. You think I'm going to take your word over my clients? And then I can say, let's say I'm not okay with it. What are you proposing? So obviously, the third option is a potential betrayal, I would assume, or maybe some way to evacuate the Volkovites. But, you know, that's not what we're going to do. You know, I'm going to say, I don't write the contracts, Commander. You know that because, hey, look, House Liao has been, you know, the, the cha if we can impress the Chancellor, aka like the supreme leader of House Liao, who, who knows? Like, we could be going places. So I'm going to be the big jerk button say, that. Look, Fox, I don't want to fight you again, to be perfectly honest. I don't even know if we can fight you. Not after the damage you did to us on the last drop, but maybe we can come out of this as friends instead of enemies. My clients have authorized me to a, to double the offer of what House Liao is paying you if you'll help escort them off-world rather than killing them. We'll take them back to Joppa, in the frontier, they'll be out of House Liao's hair and out of danger, and you'll come out on top. The Chancellor himself is watching this job, Commander. If we break our contract, our reputation with House Liao is going straight into the toilet. I can't dispute that. You'd be taking a risk. But from one mercenary to another, it's the right thing to do. Anyways, the choice is yours. What's it going to be? Here are our choices. Honor our contract with House Liao. Sorry, but I've got my company's reputation to think about. I can't break the contract. Or we could say... Break your contract with House Liao and help the Volkovites. Tell your clients that we'll help them to escape. Now, you already know what I'm going to say. You know, like, what, what are we going to do? Like, care about these, like, guys? Or are we going to care that, like, the, ch you know, Max Mil Chancellor Maximilian Liao, the Celestial, a.k.a. the Celestial Wisdom, is watching the company right now. He's going to be paying the mega money, the mega loots. And what are these guys going to pay? Like, double the C-bills? I can get C-bills anywhere. But if Maximilian is going to be, like, shelling out that Lost Tech gear, that's what I care about. So, sorry, but I've got my company's reputation reputation to think about. I can't break contract. You know, I was really hoping that there was more to you than your reputation suggested. Guess not. Got you on the battlefield, Fox. Well, so you're going to take the rest of your ragtag mechs plus my brand new Cyclops that I'm going to be refitting, and I'm going to be using your own mech against you? We'll see how that goes. The view screen goes blank as Commander Elliot he cuts the connection. I don't think any of us are especially enthusiastic about carrying out this mission. I, I am. You know, get, give me the missiles. I will rain the death down if they're paying me the lost tech. But we're between a rock and a hard place here. The best thing we can do is carry out the rest of this mission and quickly and as professionally as we can. Let's get it done. We'll worry about how we are going to make our peace with it afterwards. Oh, yeah. And I get to repair. That means we are going to deploy the Cyclops into the next battle. Well, at least I think it will. I'll have to check my navigation to see, like, it, it could take a good five to seven days to get the Cyclops up and running. And that might jeopardize... 
another mission. It might jeopardize another flashpoint. So I'll have to double check that. But if we got the clear, we are sending our brand new command mech into battle. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Like this video. If it was fun and interesting, let me know if you think Fox is a humongous jerk butt, right? You can't see it, but I'm doing like that crazy Egyptian dance, like where you like, you know, like make the weird angles with your arms because I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna blow these guys up and get paid.